I'm going bounce except for Rocky Super Saiyan K.O. Kid on him, I'm best believe that when I'm done They know that I ain't playing with them anymore I'm going Kamehameha and shit Destructive, I ain't the one to fuck with What's up my wizards, it's Dev from the place with the Gex And it's good to be back, back, Bach It's good to be Bach Um, today we're gonna finally Finally do Alesha. It's about time, I'd say. And we're going to go ahead and do Mardu Alesha because it got, like, way more votes, it turns out. I was surprised by that. I figured we'd all want to see the Jund, and there are some people that want to see the Jund. Don't worry, I've got a Jund deck coming up for you. It's not Alesha, but that's cool. Still got a Jund deck coming up for you. Don't worry. But we're going to go ahead with Mardu Alesha right this second. Well, we're playing 30 creatures in the deck. I mean, we have to take advantage of Alesha's ability as much as possible and have synergy with other things. So, we gotta play a lot of creatures in the deck. Although Mardu does have more than a handful of really good spells at its disposal, we tried to pick and choose what we can do's, but for the most part, creatures. We're playing a lot of one drops. It turns out eight of them. Eight one drops. Two of which are Zergo Bell Striker and two of which are Lightning Berserker. I put these guys up at the same time because A, they both dash, B, they're both important creatures in the very early game, and really, li Lightning Berserker, Lightning from FF13. I mean, she's got the red hair and everything. But anyway, Lightning is a very, very important creature. In development, she was called the Fireball on legs, and that's what people called her all during Pro Tour. That's what she is. You sneak this in. If you can resolve this, against control late in the game, it's usually game, which we saw a lot of at Pro Tour. Um, and we see a lot of it at FNMs, honestly. I mean, we, sn we <laughs> throw this down for, you know, usually four damage at a time. And really good card, it turns out. I did have, like, ideas with Impact Trimmers and even um, Anafenza at the beginning of this, but all those got cut. But it turns out you don't need to have Ridiculous Synergy with Lightning Berserker. It's just that good. And Zergo is just, you know, one of the other best early game creatures that we could possibly play in this thing. We got four Kithians. <laughs> four Kithians right here. And yeah, it started off as three, but we see so many decks that play four Kithians that I was like, yeah, let's do that. Especially considering we need Kithian for a very specific purpose. It's awesome, super awesome, when we can give our Alesha indestructible for the turn and then swing in with her, grab something out of our graveyard. He's so integral to the way that they work, the deck works, we'll be attacking with many, many creatures, I mean 30 creatures, like I said. Being able to flip him very easily, he turns into a 4-4 that doesn't take damage. We need a higher-end threat like that in this deck, and makes your dudes indestructible. And taps down blockers, <laughs> so it you know, makes Alesha easier to go through. And there's lots of different things that this card does for us. we got to play it. Three copies of Mardu Skull Hunter. This is super good, by the way, to Alesha in because it comes in tapped and attacking. You do not have to worry about it coming into the battlefield tap. And since you've already attacked with something this turn, guaranteed because you're using Alesha's ability, then they have to discard a card. Just all the synergies with Alesha in the world and. Not a bad second turn play against most decks in the format. I mean, ripping a card out of their hand, especially against Control, and even some of the higher range decks, you know, um, like Green Red Devotion right now, ripping a card out of their hand is like super duper relevant. I like Skull Hunter a lot. Here are the Warrior Centric cards right here. Three copies of Chief of the Edge, two copies of Blood Chain Rager. Um, both integral to the success of the deck. It's really awesome, especially with Alesha to get a Chief of the Edge back into play with her ability, because it doesn't matter if the Chief dies, at that point it doesn't necessarily matter if Alesha dies, it's just your things get bigger. 21 of your dudes can get bigger off of bringing a Chief of the Edge back, and getting multiples obviously is ridiculous. Bloodchain Ranger, I do want to make the point that you do not, if you Alesha it into play, you don't get the when it attacks trigger, that it doesn't work that way. It comes into play tapped and attacking, it is missed the attack trigger, so it won't work to turn your brain into play. It's important to point that out. Um, but still, a very, very important card for the deck, because a lot of the things we want to get through are warriors. Specifically, Alesha, by the way, makes her easier to get through and not be blocked and survive for the next turn. And we're playing a couple copies of Grey Blade Marauder a little later on in the deck, and we got to let that get through, and this helps it get through very easily. Love the card a lot. Two copies of Irish and Foremost. This started off as a full four, but brought it down to two. This is obviously super awesome to bring into play with Alesha, which a lot of the creatures in the deck are. Um, obviously, we don't care about the missing the attacks trigger. When it, comes, when it enters the battlefield, we get that same trigger. Um, so a lot of the times you'll give your Alesha double strike. That's super important, allowing her again 
more ease of, um, you know, able to stay alive <laughs> through combat. Giving her double strike is super good, too. You know, six damage. And three first strike damage is awesome. So, and there's more things you can obviously, you can give double strike, including the foremost. Um, just, thing makes, you know, swings get crazy. If you just, you know, have Alesha swing with her and bring this in, you're dealing ten points of damage off just these two creatures. So, do at least want the two copies of foremost in the deck. I think it's a fairly important card. And four copies of Alesha, the beast herself, man. Um, Alesha, you know, obviously is the namesake of the deck. I don't have to talk about the card that much because it does most of the things we want to do. Obviously, the deck can survive without Alesha. It can do things without Alesha. But once you do have an Alesha out that's able to swing in, you know, then things get crazy pretty quick. And obviously, this gives us a very long game, which a deck like this needs uh, very, very much. And there's a lot of interesting, you know, you know, the battlefield triggers are interesting synergies for creatures that you bring in. And that's all I can say, man. Alesha is the HBIC around these parts, and there's a reason for that. It turns out, I think this deck is fairly competitive, especially post-rotation, when we lose all the decks that go way over the top of it, although we are getting... Some Eldrazi, so we'll have to see about that. But Creed by Devotion is a huge problem for this deck right now because it goes so far over the top of it, and by the time this deck gets set up, it's got huge dragons and blue chronoses that are blowing your dudes away. But we won't have to worry about that a couple of months from now, and I think the deck does get much more competitive. Just the one copy of Bloodshin Fanatic. We are really, really pushing the three drops. A lot of our creatures are three drops in this deck. Um, but Bloodshin Fanatic is just incredible, especially, you know, when you do draw it. Then you're able to get synergy off of Alesha. She can bring the dude you sacrifice back into play. That's pretty cool. And just a good finishing blow, you know. If you got four mana open and a couple of warriors, you can end up doing four to six damage off of this. And if you got Chief of the Edge out, even more than that. So there's a lot of good things to say about Fnatic. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want to overplay it, especially considering it's, it has no value in multiples at all. Three copies. Liliana. That's right, we're playing two Planeswalkers from Origin in this deck. Um, Liliana is especially, especially good. Has good, you know, parity, a nice, you know, um, redundant ability with Alesha, her negative X ability. We're putting a lot of creatures in the graveyard with, like, Nantuko us. And just through basic combat, we count on that happening. So, Liliana is good. It helps us go long again. And her first ability, we don't care that much about discarding cards, like, at all. And when we do discard cards, we can get them right back. So, Liliana does so many good things, and we will have creatures die, making her very easy to flip. She also has lifelink, which is actually kind of, sort of, important against decks that go up under us, and the fact that we're using, you know, eight pain lands and a, a couple of, um, fetch lands. So, we do need something to help stabilize our life total, and she's all we really have. Um, so, that being said, I do want to play at least three copies of, of Liliana. She just does so, so, so much, and pairs up with Alesha pretty well, you know? Just good parody with that card. Two copies of Nantuko Husk, yep, gotta have them, I think. I, I was playing like Alpha Siege and stuff like that, but ended up, didn't, didn't want to play those cards, but ended up still wanting to play the Nantuko Husk, you know? Husk is super duper dumb, and we can put cards back into play with Anafensa, or Anafensa, with Alesha the next turn, and Husk is just too good. I mean, if they let it go through, then it's going to deal a lot of damage, and we're not that worried about a creature or two being sacrificed to it. A lot of things I like about Husk, and we got to put cards in the graveyard for the next creature, which is Graveblade Marauder. We're playing two copies of this as well. Again, don't want to play too, too many copies of this. I don't want to see it all the time, but later on in the game, when we've got a, a Bloodshin Rager out, that's pretty good. Or when we can bring this back in with Alesha, like, every turn, that's pretty hot, too. I mean, 30 creatures in the deck guaranteed to occasionally have a ton of creatures in your graveyard, especially once we get into the late turn. So a Great Blade Marauder that hits can really end the game in a hurry for you, and I love the card. And has good stats on top of that. I mean, a 1-4 Death Touch, I don't mind at all. This blocks and kills pretty much every everything in the format that doesn't fly or have indestructible. But that's that's beside the point. This kills almost everything on blocks in the format. Doesn't survive against Siege Rhino, but you don't care. I mean, you'll get your dude right back. They won't. On the spells, we are playing six spells. Three copies of Wild Slash, again, to help out against decks that go up under us because we have some setup time in this deck. That's what this deck has a problem with. Some important decks, Red Aggro, go up under it very easily. And then some other important decks, Green Red Devotion, go way over the top of it. You know, this deck has a really interesting mid-range game, but not a whole lot of long game, although we do have some things to help us. Alesha and Liliana specifically help us go long, but even though we do go long fairly well against the other decks that are meant 
to go along, namely the, the big ramp devotion decks, we have poor games. So, you know, I, I put the Wild Slash in there to help out against decks that are, that are uh, short, you know, shorter game <laughs> than us. And I put in two copies of Valorous Stance to help us out against decks that go bigger than us. Um, Valorous Stance is important for a couple of reasons. Actually, I wanted more copies in the main, but I just couldn't fit them in the main. Um, this helps our Alesha stay alive, because she's a lightning rod, she's always going to be hit. And a lot of our other important creatures are Erish and Foremost, Chief of the Edge, um, Bloodshin, Rager, and Fanatic, Liliana, when she's not flipped. I mean, th this helps every single one of our creatures survive, because a lot of our creatures are are important, <laughs> very important lightning rods. And again, we don't care if creatures go to the graveyard so much, but this really helps protect Alesha, which is important, and kills creatures that we would not otherwise be able to deal with that go way over the top of us. So, very versatile card in the deck, does everything we need it to do. I want to play at least two copies, and we're playing one copy to finish off the spells of Crackling Doom in the uh, in the main deck here. Um, Crackling Doom, obviously good against the Jutai, Silungar, a lot of those creatures that we can't target right now. Um, but also does two to the dome, that's important, and is awesome. I mean, I can't really say that much about this card other than you should probably play it because we're playing Marty. We're only playing the one copy of the main, but that's because I want to play a ton of creatures in the deck. But Crackling Doom is a card that's right here in my heart, and i got to play at least the one copy of it. Here's the lands. One copy of Rogue's Passage is fairly important. We want to help um, Great Blade Marauder and Nantuko Hus get through. We want to help a huge Lightning Berserker get through. That's important. And we want to obviously help Alesha get through unblocked so that she doesn't die. Which <laughs> That's important as well. So Rogue's Passage definitely does have a very, very important place in the deck. <laughs> Here's the board. Fairly simple, right? I think so. Scat Plan, Clan Berserker against, you know, Control and decks like that that want to counter and kill your dudes. Um, Erish and Cleric against decks that go up underneath us. Again, very good to get back into play with Alesha against Aggro. I mean, you can really put the game out of reach with just a couple of activations and, you know, playing it once and then getting it out of the graveyard. I mean, that's six life. That's a lot. Um, Duress against Control. We have some problems against Control, but Duress is also against Red Aggro and things like that. I mean, they play an overabundance of spells. So, I feel like this is a fairly standard sideboard right here. Again, Mardu Row Reaper could be in the main deck, by the way, but just didn't end up in there. Is good against Aggro and decks that want to play out of their graveyard. So, it's a good card, don't get me wrong, but I'd rather play Zergo, I think, in the main deck. As far as the power rankings go, let me go through this real quick. I've had some re uh, requests lately to say how I formulate these power rankings, so let me do this very, very fast. Power is a four in this deck. Power is determined by the individual power level of the cards in the deck. Now, we're not playing too many incredibly powerful, you know, cards in this deck that are breaking standard or even that important in standard, so it doesn't get a very high power ranking. Speed is a six. It's a little over the middle. We are playing, you know, one, two, and three drops only in the deck, but it does require some setup time, so it gets a 6. Um, synergy is a 6. Could be slightly higher, it turns out. There's a fair amount of synergy in the deck, but again, the deck does not rely on or require its synergy to win, so it gets a middling number. Um, versatility is a 5. That's because we have problems against Red Aggro and Green Devotion, and even some problems against Control, but not as many. Not as many against Control, especially if we can resolve key creatures like Lightning Berserker, Alesha, you know, out of the sideboard we do very well against control, so not as concerned against control, although getting our creatures wiped does suck, but we have some re resilient strategies for that. That's why our resiliency is also a 5. Um, Alesha really, really helps, but you have to resolve her and keep her on the board for at least one full turn, and she has to not die for you to keep doing this. So the deck isn't as resilient as it looks on paper, but still has a fair to decent resiliency, especially with the dashing creatures in the deck. Um, offense is an 8 because we are incredibly offensively minded. Once we get set up, we want to get in there for some damage and just keep piling it on by putting creatures into play every single turn, dashing dudes in, getting dudes back with Alesha, doing, you know, getting dudes back with Liliana, doing all the things we have to do, you know, making our, making our dudes indestructible with Kithion. I mean, there's lots and lots and lots of things that this deck does offensively. Now, defensively, it doesn't do a whole lot well, although it does have some removal as a backup in it, and it does some things decently, you know, defensively with some of its creatures, but... Not too much. It turns out the deck is very offensively minded. Um, game 1 is a 6, mostly because they're not going to see it coming. They don't know what the heck you're doing until you start getting set up. As soon as you play Alesha, they know what's up. 
Um, although they might not understand that that's the focal point of the deck, because the deck could just play like a sort of, you know, aggro-y, mid-range-y thing, you know, you know, first, a little, like a turn faster than mid-range, a turn slower than aggro. Um, but the deck could also just be, you know, a warrior's deck, you could just play, you know, you don't have to have a legend, <laughs> is all I'm trying to say. Um, but after, that being said, the deck is easily figured out after a moment and does have problems against a couple of key decks. Um, after boards, especially against control, that's the reason this number takes a dip. After boards, we have some issues, although we have better game against the decks that we are bad against. Um, decks that we're decent against get much, much better after board, so that does hurt our chances. Um, and our consistency is a 7. This is just the deck's ability to do the thing that it does on a consistent basis, you know, which we do. I mean, like I said, we don't need Alesha. Uh, we just need to play creatures, and the deck is very consistent at doing that. Its curb is pretty decent, although a lot of three drops in the deck, but by the time you get to turn three or four, you're just going to be playing creature nearly every turn. Um, so consistency is, is fairly decent in the deck, and that is how I determine each power ranking. Now, I think I'm running low on time on this video. I really hope my phone hasn't died yet while I'm recording this, um, so I'm going to go quick. I've got a couple of ideas for next time. Um, I am going to go ahead and definitely do next time blue-white flyers. I've had a lot of people ask for that, sort of reaching critical mass at this point. So I'm going to do that, although my version of the deck right now has absolutely zero spells. So blue-white flyers deck with nothing but creatures. Um, let me know how you feel about that, and I'll put that out. Um, or you can tell me that sounds terrible, and I'll tweak it a little bit. I um, also want to do the Great Aurora really soon. I've got ideas for that. And just sort of mono-red aggro after rotation. All these are ideas, but I'm definitely doing Orzorius Flyers next. So in any case, I'm Dev from SBMTG. If you like the content, please help us out. Like, share, comment, subscribe. It all helps us with the algorithm. And we like to know what you have to say. So, you know, hit us up. Get in touch with us. And I'll see you guys next time, man. Thanks for watching, my wizards.